us had a clue what was going to happen. And when that murder in the shower scene came, I've never seen an audience react like that. Alfred Hitchcock was not praised just because he directed monumental movies. He made the spectators feel the situation with his sensibility. Critics praise the works in enthusiasm. And movie history can never be recorded without his achievement. As if a zigzag puzzle, Hitchcock hides hidden clues in his movies for the viewer and help them to sympathetic, draw emphasis quite natural way. Therefore, viewers feel delighted with self-satisfaction, which led to such resonance in the movie history. The montage of Eisenstein, the photo aesthetics of surrealism, and the creative originality of cliché are melted in Hitchcock's movies, as if an orchestra director interpreted scores with his creativity. Hitchcock occupied movie history with his genius creativity. Critics 
artists erected a new pantheon of cinema. The directors who were the true artists, the authors who wrote with the camera, the auteurs. La poétique des auteurs dit c'est l'individualisation totale. La poétique des auteurs dit non pas que tous les films d'Hitchcock sont bons et tout ce que la noix sont mauvais, mais elle dit le plus mauvais film d'Hitchcock est plus intéressant pour nous que le meilleur film de, de, de la noix. Voilà. Elle est une profession d'individualisme quand même. La nouvelle vague, c'est le moment où le cinéma prend conscience de lui-même. Et où de, de, de jeunes cinéastes en devenir euh, disent euh, le cinéma est un art et nous sommes des artistes. Bonjour Alain Being an individual artist meant self-exposure. Pouring all of yourself into your movie. All of your fears and obsessions and fetishes. Just like Hitchcock did. All together. Tout ce qui le terrifie le pense jusqu'à un point où il puisse dire qu'il est attiré par ça. Et s'arrête pas simplement à la terreur. Il, 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 il a une fascination pour ce qui le terrifie. Le film critique André Bazin, qui a virtuellement adopté Truffaut et l'a brought him to Cahiers du Cinéma. He found Jean Renoir and Roberto Rossellini. And he found Alfred Hitchcock. Hitchcock had freed Truffaut as an artist, and Truffaut wanted to reciprocate by freeing Hitchcock from his reputation as a light entertainer. And that's the basis on which they started their conversation. Dude, I, when I'm on the set, I'm not on the set. I'm watching it on the screen. That's the key to Hitchcock in a way. I mean, he's, he sees the picture in his head. I imagine he just sat alone and these images came to him and he just never questioned it. Hitchcock thing to 
to this story, but now I have my series of linear plot devices leading to a fall from a high place. Actually, <laughs> I'm not so pretty. Uh, I suppose like any artist who paints or writes, who doesn't I'm limited to a certain field. You know. see a certain domain. Je n'aime pas le contrôle au cinéma. Je n'aime pas l'idée d'un tournage où il n'y a pas une forme de transformation du scénario, de transformation de la matière humaine. Et je trouve qu'il y a quelque chose de transcendant dans le rapport au contrôle de Hitchcock. C'est-à-dire que, 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 que Hitchcock a inventé une clarté des tons dans l'écriture qui non pas matérialiste, mais qui capture de l'invisible, qui saisit une forme de spiritualité. I went high because I didn't want to spend a lot of footage on people getting out houses and starting to put out a fire. des gens qui sortaient leur truc et éteignaient le feu. If you play it a long way away, you aren't committed to any detail. It wasn't just um, simply to show the whole town and how birds are coming in. It, it took on another kind of apocalyptic religious feel. It was omniscient. It's the cleansing of the, of the earth. Whose point of view is it when you cut to a brother and God's point of view? Are we all being judged from above? You know, that, that kind of suggests that. Je sens très fort l'odeur du péché originel ici. Yes. C'est curieux parce que souvent, tous les films Hitchcock, à peu près, sont basés sur un transfert de culpabilité, y compris de mon main. On me prête un crime que je n'ai pas commis, mais tant fond, est-ce que je n'ai jamais commis un crime Et Donc c'est le transfert de culpabilité qui est à la base de tous les films. Toujours avec ce même mouvement, Hitchcock se retire du film, ce qui permet au spectateur d'occuper une place prééminente dans, dans le film. Et en même temps, à la, à la fin du, du film, on a l'impression qu'on a vu un autoportrait de, de son auteur. C'est très très troublant. Vous rêvez très souvent Non, non, non. Et vous sentez l'importance du rêve dans ce cas What senses in your work the importance of dreaming Daydreams, probably. Sans le vouloir, vous retombez automatiquement sur le domaine de, du rêve qui est souvent fait sur le péril et la solitude. Well, that's probably me within myself. Hitchcock keeps referring to these sort of fetish objects, keys and handcuffs and ropes and stuff, which are kind of dream objects, which have a kind of Gordian weight to them. Comme dans le rêve, il y a une sorte de hyper perception des objets. Il y a des choses qui tout d'un coup, des détails qui prennent une promesse une prééminence, en fait, une importance essentielle et des choses essentielles qui sont au second plan. Et c est, c est, ça, c'est vraiment le rêve. Ça, c'est vraiment le rêve. Un sac à main signifie, une clé signifie, une bouteille signifie. Et ce qu'elle signifie, on ne sait pas ce que ça signifie. Comme dans un rêve, on se dit, mais quelle est la clé des songes J'ai rêvé d'un oiseau. Qu'est-ce que ça voulait dire dans, dans, dans Birds Pourquoi Et on ne sait pas. C'est comme disait euh, Truffaut, des gens qui ont connu le, le secret perdu, des gens qui ont commencé à l'époque du cinéma muet, qui savent quelque chose du cinéma que tous les cinéastes qui ont commencé par en parlant ignoreront toujours. So many Hitchcock films would work silently. You could watch a Hitchcock film without any dialogue or music and I think you'd still get a really high percentage of it. Il y a vraiment un, un savoir plastique là d'une force admirable. Les transparences chez Hitchcock ont une fonction qui est vraiment qui est extrêmement complexe. He was one of the first guys who said, I'm going to go with it. <laughs> I'm just going to go with it.
just gonna, I'm gonna be, I gotta be me. of his best work. There's a more direct umbilicus to his subconscious. Certainly, I think that's true of Vertigo. The sex psychological side no, is to sex. have a man creating a sex image that he can't go to bed with her until he's got her back to the thing he wants to go to bed with. Enfin, Vertigo est un film pour lequel vous avez beaucoup de tendresse, je crois. Quand même. Yes, I, I enjoy. All of the standing idea of desire, that's part of what makes us us. I think Kim Novak coming out of the bathroom is the single greatest moment in the history of movies. At that moment, everything that Hitchcock was about, everything that cinema is about, comes together in the most beautiful way, which is, yes, it's a fantasy, but the fantasy is real to him. This is so extraordinary. It's the one moment when he gets some kind of fulfillment. And then after that, it's time to go. Directors of Hitchcock's generation, the ones who came up under the studio system, were all mindful of their audience. But in Hitchcock's case, it ran deeper than that. His films are made in a dialogue with the public. It's close, almost intimate. It doesn't matter where the film goes. If you've designed it correctly, if you design it correctly, the Japanese audience should scream at the same time as the Indian audience. Could you still play an audience the way Hitchcock can? They do, but it's a different audience. Hitchcock은 기념비적인 영화를 감독했다는 것만으로 성찬되지는 않는다. 관객이 피부로 영화를 느끼고 비평가가 몰입하여 작품을 찬양하고 영화의 역사가 히치콕 감독을 제외하고선 영화사를 기술할 수 없게 만들었다는 점이 불멸의 공로라 할수 있다. I would say that it is pretty well as cinematic as a lot of pictures. Well,我觉得是。这个电影和摩里的电影的创意和自然的创意是相互的。这个电影和自然的创意是相互的。这个电影和自然的创意是相互的。这个电影和自然的创意是相互的。这个电影和自然的创意是相互的。这个电影和自
surprise people and to take you in unusual directions. He sort of thrived on that and he was very proud of that. That's what his cinema is kind of based on. The beginning of Psycho. It's, it's one of the great misdirections. He is playing with your expectations of where you're supposed to be in a movie, where you're supposed to be in a Hitchcock movie, where you're supposed to be in a Universal movie. You can argue the value of Janet Lee's performance. You can say, well, that's a little flat, it's a little this, that's a little kabuki. Maybe all of those things are leading you to believe, as an audience member, there's a, there's a bigger cumulative effect. She's servicing an expectation. Oh, Cassidy, I told you, all that cash. And there's a sense of, of movement ahead, movement ahead. She steals money, then she decides to drive away, then she becomes guilty about it. Gee, I'm sorry I didn't hear you in all this rain. Then she meets this guy in a motel and he's telling her all his problems. A few years ago, mother met this man and he, he talked her into building this motel. You, you watch, you want to know what happens. She can bring that money back. You know what Sandy Perkins really going to do? 히치콕 영화에는 에이젠스타인의 몽타주의론과 초현실주의 영상미학 및 클리셰의 격창적인 자기화가 녹아있다. 마치 악보를 자기화하여 작곡가와 비견되는 명곡으로 만드는 지휘자처럼 히치콕은 영화사를 점령한다. Shadowy figure behind that kind of misqueen 